Okay, this is Gamer Blave, and we are back with another episode of Battletech. And if you missed the last episode, then we were doing some mercenary missions. We were building up our, uh, we were building up our mech reserves, and we've got some really, uh, really interesting stuff to talk about with respect to that. We have been working on. Uh, building up uh, um, uh, mechs. In the meantime, I've done a couple of episodes, uh, or, or sorry, a couple of missions uh, in between. I've done three missions in precise uh, in between uh, the last uh, the last episode and this one, and we're going to talk about those. But first, there was one uh, there was one uh, of those random uh, events that pop up on screen. And when it first splashed up on screen, I was like, you know what? This one actually seems kind of important. So I turned on the recorder and I recorded that event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually splice that in here and talk about it. Kel's request. Early in the morning, Dr. Murad knocks on your door excitedly. Commander, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm not supposed to share this, but Morgan Kell contacted me directly. He needs me, he needs my expertise to study a rare piece of lost tech. Okay, who's Morgan Kell? Morgan Kell, born 2986. Morgan Kell first rose to prominence in 3004 when he, his cousin Arthur Levon, and Katrina Steiner were forced into the periphery by Archon Alessandro Steiner. Masquerading as pirates under the banner of the Red Corsair, they eventually made their way back into the inner sphere and overthrew the Archon. After Arthur Levon's death, Morgan Kell and his brother Patrick founded the Kell Hounds Mercenary Unit. While initially dismissed by the greater mercenary community, the Kell Hounds rapidly rose to become one of the preeminent mercenary commands in the Inner Sphere. In 3016, Morgan Kell engaged Yorinaga Kurita, commander of the Second Sword of Light, in single combat. It was a move designed to save the lives of Kell's unit, and it succeeded. Kurita was unable to kill Kell, and the duel ended in a stalemate. Afterward, Kell disbanded the majority of the Kell Hounds, put the remainder under control of his brother Patrick, and retired to a life of self-imposed exile at the St. Marinus House Monastery on Zania. He remains there to this day. Okay, so that is an interesting guy and um, has some, uh, uh, has become uh, a dude of legend here apparently. So, the Morgan Kell. <laughs> Slow down, the Morgan Kell. I know, he's a living legend, Dr. Murad smiles widely. Unfortunately, there aren't many records on how 400 year old technology works. I know it's a lot to ask, but if you can grant me one week, half a million sea bills, and a dozen mech techs, I think we can really help him. Not a bad potential ally, right? So at this point, we we are um, we are working on some mechs, but I really want to see you know a lot of times you know if you really sacrifice some stuff you really get some good stuff so uh, i do i do want to i do want to do um what we can do here um in order to you know in order to uh, move it move it forward so let's see what happens okay so if we commit everything uh, after committing everything, after Dr. Murad returns from helping Morgan Kell, she calls you to the command center. A hollow vid of Kell shimmers in the air. I regret not going to you directly, Commander, but my self-imposed exile hasn't kept the Kuritans from hunting for me. It's hard to know who I can trust anymore, but I took a calculated risk with Dr. Murad. She tells me that it's due to your contributions that she finally made the breakthrough she needed. I'll send over a little bonus for her exceptional work, something from my time in the periphery. Oh, one more thing, Kel pauses, stroking his beard. If you ever hear any tales about a phantom mech, don't correct them. The hollow vid blinks out 
and Kel vanishes. Okay, so we get the two double we get two double heat sinks here, and that is just absolutely phenomenal. We had lost one heat sink, one double heat sink, which really really sucks. But two double heat sinks, five hundred thousand C bills. Uh, I mean, that isn't a huge price to pay. Uh, the minus 10 tech points for seven days. I mean, that kind of sucks. It did push our work back here a little bit, um, but that's only gonna bump the work back um, for seven days. So after seven days, then, then that work back goes back to normal. So honestly, not a huge price to pay for what we gained here. So that's actually really, really awesome. Okay, we're back now, and man, that was a really neat event. But, so, as I said, we've done three missions, and in those missions, we've, we've uh, done some really neat stuff. Um, we've mostly been accumulating mechs on the black market. So, let's go to the mech bay and check out what we've done here. So, now, in the very last mission that we saw, we, we were able to grab ourselves an atlas and that was really really cool so man with this new with with our new toys we've really started to be able to pick up some steam and, and really get some stuff done on the battlefield so the atlas has been really working out well for us now on the first mission that i went on i didn't pick any battlefield loot but we actually went up against three stalkers on the battlefield so we were at uh, even though i didn't pick any loot i was going for maximum money we were able to actually get a piece in in uh, the the loot that we uh, took out of the battlefield so i didn't have to end up having to buy a piece uh, i didn't ha have to buy two pieces sorry because we had one piece already so we well, we had two pieces after that and then i sold uh, our three medium mechs that we had and i bought another piece so we got a stalker uh, then, uh, I also sold that, um, Banshee that we had. I sold that thing for roughly a million. Uh, and then did a, did two more missions after that. And we got another mech or two that we had completed from random storage components that we had, uh, had laying around. And the black market is really nice because you can sell the mechs that you have for more than you can scrap them. So I was able to come together with the 5.7 million to also buy this King Crab. So, <laughs> so we have really, really decked out our arsenal here. Now, if we talk about the Stalker for, stalker for just a second, I haven't actually used the King Crab yet. I have used the Stalker uh, on um, two of the missions that we went on. Uh, and then I just bought the King Crab. So the Stalker basically is the new indirect fire support. If we go into it here, see it's got two LRM-20s, an LRM-10++, and an LRM-15. So this thing is shooting um, 65 missiles, right? Every single time uh, we go... Uh, every single time the uh, uh, it, we pull the trigger right is that right 40 55 65 65 missiles now we we uh, have what one two three four we've got eight um, eight LRM ammos so that's 800 plus 20 times eight uh, is um, what is that uh, 160. So that's 960 rockets. So, I mean, it, it, that actually goes pretty fast. It's something like 14 point something shots, I think. So, I mean, it's, it's going to go pretty fast. But the amount of firepower that we are bringing to bear here, that should be more than enough. That being said, this thing is really fairly lightly armored. So we don't want to screw around. Highlander, haven't done much with that. I did take off those machine guns that I had, uh, I don't, I can't remember if they were on it to begin with, or we had fitted them on there. I took them off, I stuck another heat sink on there. Now you note, from that event that I was talking about, we wound up with two more double heat sinks. So, you know, that's actually 
really really uh, uh good stuff there so we can talk about that too um i i actually took a little bit of firepower off of the king crab because i wanted to make it more tanky uh, I can't go into it right now because I did spend a lot of time tweaking it. But yeah, basically, we still have a lot of firepower. We got two AC-20s, um, and uh, uh, we've got uh, two SRM-6s. So that's really it. It's close-range firepower. It's a lot of firepower, but it's not like completely overwhelming, devastating firepower. You could certainly get a lot more on the King Crab, but we have maxed out its front armor, and I stuck jump jets on this thing. I know it's insane to stick on a king crab 100 tons, but this is going to be Behemoth's mech. So I wanted her to be able to be mobile, to be able to move around, maneuver with those AC-10s, and also to be able to build up some evasion to make it even harder to bring this thing down. So the whole per the main purpose of this thing I wanted to be uh, to be a uh, replacement for that battle master that we had and we really liked that battle master that battle master was really really good but this is the new battle master the new and improved battle master is the king crab and uh and i think it's going to do a good job at that and we really needed that because the as you can see its movement is only one pellet so we're not going to be able to move around the battlefield very well by just walking <laughs> so we need those jump jets <laughs> Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, so we've got the Atlas. So that's really going to be our main squad. Sadly, the Awesome has been kind of bumped out, even though I really, really like that mech. And uh, the Catapult is also just, um, you know, not going to be there. I, I, I kept it in one of the bays down here in the unlikely event. We haven't run into it at all. The unlikely event that we run into a mission where I've got too heavy of a lance because I know that is a thing, there is a drop ton limit, then I would replace the stalker with the catapult uh, and use that as my fire, as my uh, my indirect fire support. But that's really what we're dealing with. And now, I mean, honestly, I, I, I feel like this is, I, I don't know what we could really do to have a more powerful lance other than get better weapons. These are stock AC-20s that we've got on the King Crab right now, so I wouldn't mind fi finding like some AC-20 plus pluses uh, and, and some stuff like that. Um, don't really have any of those available here. I don't even think there are any in the black market, but we're straight up broke. Um, I didn't... I didn't do uh, enough grinding to get this Gauss rifle, even though that is is clearly phenomenal. I would also really like to have um, this LRM15++ um, to stick in that stalker. I mean, there, there are a bunch of really great, great things here that we could have. Um, this comm system, I would like it. I have a comm system in, uh, in the stalker, so it's giving us a three resolve per turn. But I mean, like all these things would be really, really great, but it's just not in the cards because I don't want to spend uh, more three missions. And, and I, <laughs> I'll tell you something else. We didn't take, uh, we didn't take any damage at all. No one in those three missions got through our armor. Uh, on our guys <laughs> it was something else I uh, completely just steamrolled uh, those missions it was it was really really something else and now we're even more we're even stronger so anyway I digress I've yabbed yabbered yabbered whatever yammered yabbered whatever I'm, I'm super excited now we can go <laughs> and take this Lady Irano contract at Itram Okay, so let's have a look at the description. And, um, you know, I don't feel like we're going to really need to grind a whole lot anymore. Um, I, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take, you know, basically whatever comes, I think. Unless we really feel like we want to just, just completely and utterly obliterate into smithereens anything that comes. Or just experience the creme de la creme of weaponry. You know, I think that we've... I, I can't really picture a better Lance. I mean, maybe if something is better than the Stalker? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's let's have a look at this. Okay. Proceed to Itram where you will assist the Restoration Army's efforts 
to liberate House Gallus. The enemy will be fighting from a position of relative isolation. To take advantage of this, we suggest a lance loadout built to maximize rapid damage dealing potential. Okay, yeah, we've got that. We have got that in spades. Heat management will also be essential. Further details will be provided upon your arrival. Okay, well, heat management isn't 100% our forte, but damage potential, we have that. We 100% have that. that <laughs> we can, we can obliterate stuff. Okay, now something I do want to talk about, though, it's, it's, what is this? The local pirate organization. Your actions against our interests are earning you a powerful enemy commander. Continue to impede pirate operations in this region and you will pay the cost. You can view your faction reputation status in the CPD quarters. Okay, so if you were watching earlier in this, in, uh, this uh, series, I mentioned that I got a message like that about the Torian Concordant, or from the Torian Concordant. So, um, that is how that works. Uh, for the most part, I haven't really care. Oh yeah, they are pissed. They are pissed. Uh, I mean, I don't really care about the pirates. That being said, I needed to have some relationship with them in order to gain access to the black market. If they could cut my relationship with the black market off, that would be awful. The black market is the best thing in the game. Like, it's where you get access to all the best stuff. Anyway, as I was about to say, there's so much that I really, really like about this game. There are, you know, some nuances to certain things and certain systems that can irritate you, but once you kind of learn them and understand them, they make they make sense and you can work around them one thing though that i have been experiencing i guess you'd say of late that really just rubs me the wrong way and we saw it in the last episode when we were trying to capture the atlas and we did end up capturing an atlas is the fact that if you're an assault mech um, and, and I don't have it here on screen here, but you've got the different initiatives, uh, the, the initiative phases, and assault mechs go in the last initiative phase, which is fine, you know, it makes sense, they're the heaviest mechs that go last. The problem is, if you knock down an assault mech, it's in the last initiative phase, it can't go any later than that. I digress, we'll get right back to this. We'll get right back to this. Mercenaries, the game. In the middle of the afternoon, you find Glitch hunkered in the arcade playing Mercenaries, a tie-in to the popular Holovid show. Let's have a look at the Holovid show here. The series represents both the best and worst of what calls itself independent Holovid production in the periphery. Without the budget or, some say, talent of an Inner Sphere Entertainment Corporation, Mercenaries makes up for this with copious adult themes, profanity, and graphic violence. Its lead actor, Brock Armstrong, enjoys a cult following in the Aregan Reach. Commander, have you played this game yet? Maybe it touches a little too close to home. See, I'm managing my own mercenary company in the periphery. Over her shoulder, you see charts and data and little icons representing all the mechs at her disposal. You flash back at Darius' recent rundown of monthly expenses. I'm a bit stuck. What do you think I should do? Okay, um, I'm going to send her to the training modules. We finally have the training modules unlocked there. I actually forgot that we built those. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. She gains 200 experience. Wow. Glitch, you're never going to make it as a mech warrior if you're goofing off playing make-believe mercenary. Get your ass in the training modules and learn some real skills. Looking chastised, she apologizes and hurries out of the arcade. She doesn't even pause uh, to log out of the game. Glancing at the screen, you see it's only a couple more days until her blackjack is refitted and her best mech warrior is healed up. And there's one more juicy contract available in this system. Man, I, should, I shouldn't have chastised her. I shouldn't. I should have looked at some of the other options. Okay, so as I was saying... <laughs> as I was saying... So the, you knocked in an assault mech down in the last phase. Well, 
they can't go any later. It doesn't like push them back to the first phase of the next round or anything like that. They can't go any later. So if they have not already gone, they'll immediately get up. So there's, there's what effectively becomes no penalty. Like if you knock them down with another assault mech, like if you knock them down in phase one, if you were to knock them down with like a light mech, which is virtually impossible, or a medium mech, which is also pretty unlikely with the firepower, a heavy mech becomes more possible, um, you know, then you, you might be okay. Um, then, then you, you actually might have, you know, a round of that to do some damage to them. But as we saw with the Atlas, we knocked him down. He just fell over and then stood right back up. There was no, there was no penalty. The only penalty was that he took a, a damage. He took, he took one damage. And I mean, ultimately we were able to just incapacitate him through damage, um, which was good. So really the only thing that you are left, the only recourse that you're left with is to spec your guys into tactics if you want to take people down because that gives you an extra initiative. Um, in, in, in my opinion, in my, in my opinion, that, it, that was really poorly done. I think what they needed to do was have kind of an invisible, an invisible, um, or maybe it became visible only when an assault mech is knocked down zero initiative. And the only way you can enter the zero initiative is if you're an assault mech and you get knocked down because there, there needs to be an, there needs to be a, a penalty for an assault mech getting knocked down because every, every mech category already has the penalty of incurring an injury on the pilot. Every mech already gets that. So the assault mechs, though, do not get um, get that penalty. Now, on the uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if slash when one of my guys gets knocked down, I'm going to be grateful for that. Uh, but uh, I guess on the on the other side of the spectrum, so. Uh, in 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 uh, I guess reaction to that, if we're playing the we're going to try to knock an assault mech down game, what we're going to have to do is try to knock them down after they've gone. So then, I mean, chances are we wouldn't really get much out of that because they're going to prioritize getting up. So by the time, I mean, they're going to go at the same time we go because we all go at one, except Decker who goes at two because he's got tactics. Anyway, I spent enough time talking at it and we're here at our contract. But anyway, that's something that really rubs me the wrong way. Go ahead and leave your thoughts uh, uh, in the comments if you, if you have any thoughts about that. That is, I guess I would say, the one system that is just flawed and I can't see the logic to it. Uh, I, I can't see the logic to it. Um, you, you know, I mean, no, no game. I, I mean, I wouldn't say any game is like completely 100% perfect. There are going to be like little logical flaws and inconsistencies with something. But that is to me, that's just a big, I mean, a massive glaring one. Uh, anyway. Oh, we don't have our king crab yet. Yeah, this action will put your current priority mission on hold. It will be waiting for you in the command center. Yeah, I want to wait for our king crab. I really want that king crab. Although it says drop tonnage is at max, so I don't know if we'll be able to take it. We'll, we'll find out. I'll, I'll probably prefer the king crab to the stalker, so I would drop the stalker and take the catapult. That would be one of the situations in which we would do that. So let's go ahead and confirm that. It's one day away. So yeah, let's wait for it. Job's done, Commander. Yep. Okay, so now 
we um, we take the contract and we start it and we drop that off and we boom once again it doesn't seem to be complaining so we're just gonna go in and uh, in all likelihood completely raffle stomp whatever's in here um, so in terms of like I mean like look at this thing look at it it's gonna have 1760 armor uh, that is just outrageous. Of course, the Atlas does as well. They both do. Because, I mean, I, I really prioritized the tankiness of these things. Uh, the King Crab has a, a Cockpit Mod Plus Plus, which is three injury resist. We've got a, a Cockpit Mod Plus, two injury resist on, on Glitch, because we've kind of turned her into a... I mean, just by virtue of the fact that she's in the Atlas. Uh, also tank. Because that, that thing... Uh, since we took the SRM 20 off of it and put SRM 6s on it, it's also close range. I I didn't want. I, I wanted to prefer the. Um, I I wanted to prefer the. Uh, uh, tankiness of these to uh, to the long range firepower. Um, I figured between the Stalker and the Highlander, we've got long range firepower covered. Um, and, you know, and then once these guys close the distance, then the fight's just going to be over. So, so that is going to be perfectly okay with me. Yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be, a, um, a really interesting one, I think. I'm really interested to see that, um, see the, um, King Crab in action with uh, old behemoth there at the helm see what those dual ac 20s can do i really would like that that's kind of my main uh priority now would be getting some new ac 20s for that thing we, we do have that ac 20 plus 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 on the atlas and i'd like to keep it on the atlas because it's a frontline fighter um now one <laughs> here, here's one of the the weaknesses if you'd call it that um let's have a look at the uh the the um, briefing over here really quick. I didn't actually look at it. The director has taken possession of Itram's largest processor and refinery and is attempting to loot the attached silos of rare and valuable minerals. We want you to claim them for the restoration instead. Um, so the King Crab has two AC-20s. It's only got two AC-20 ammos. So uh, it, we have five shots with those things and then it's done but i'm assuming that that's gonna be enough to really get done whatever we need to get done uh I, I once again i was prioritizing armor with that thing okay welcome to the badlands of itram commander the sands of this desert are rich in exotic elements that play havoc with electronic sensors and communications without the use of house gallus's signal boosting equipment you wouldn't even be receiving this message the Badlands are a gold mine of rare earth metals and fissile materials. The Directorate has seized control of House Gallus' largest processor and refinery, and they're getting ready to move a year's supply of exotic materials off-world. I need you to capture at least one of these silos for the restoration. Choose your target, engage its defenders, and destroy them. A recovery team will take care of the rest. You'll need to act quickly, though. The Directorate will wire the silos to self-destruct if you give them the chance. The same radiation that's garbling the Directorate's long-range communications will render their sensors useless. You can detect them, but they won't even know you're there until you enter their direct line of sight, and the silos won't be able to communicate with one another. Okay. So... Hmm. Because of this, I advi advise you to ga engage the silos one at a time, choose a target, and clear its defenders before moving on to the next. If you're careful, you'll be able to hit all three silos one after the other, and the Directorate's troops will be none the wiser. While capturing one okay. working silo is your primary objective, we can always use more. The Restoration will pay an additional bounty for each silo you capture beyond the first. Okay. Good hunting, Commander. Okay, okay, okay. Um... Let's have man the visibility here is just awful. She wasn't lying about that. So yeah, this is this is gonna be kind of a pain because these places are 
somewhat separated from their them uh from each other so i mean it's going to be a lot of walking around but um man and you just can't see diddly squat uh, let's have a look at the uh, behemoth's mech here look at this freaking thing the king crab now i am glad that we've got her extra sprinting can really only get her that far how far can she jump who not very far not very far that's max jump jets but it is a hundred ton mac so those poor little jump jets doing everything they can but uh yeah <laughs> i mean i'll take this i'll take this slow mac when it gets where it's when it gets where it's going it'll get the job done and glitch is just kind of painfully slow in that thing, to be perfectly frank. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should start training up one of those other guys and get, or, or get a better pilot um, for that. Orders? Because uh, more sprinting would be you? really useful. Receiving you. Roger so, that. I mean... The fact that I'm all in, in all assaults here might might be an issue. I mean, maybe the the sheer 45 tons. I mean, this is just going to be standing by. Uh, Decker, we're not moving in with you quite yet. That being s yeah, let's reserve with you right now. Waiting for orders. Sprint with her. I'm just trying to get everyone in here. Um, it would be okay. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna see them this turn. You're getting close, Commander. Be careful with your positioning. If they pick up a visual on you. They'll go on high alert, sensors or no sensors. Uh, okay, well... Hopefully they can't see us right now. Now, I'm just supposed to capture the silo, right? I'm certainly not supposed to blow the thing up. Um, a oh, 25 ton mech. I mean, I just need to move in here and blow all this stuff to smithereens. Like, that's just what we need to do, right? So... It's not, yeah, the king crab. Oh man, I'm gonna really like. I'm gonna. Good to go. I'm gonna enjoy this. It's go time. <laughs> I think you're really gonna enjoy that stalker too. I mean, that that thing is, that thing is kind of fun. That thing is kind of a lot of fun. Okay, right so I and guess five. we just, I guess we just go out here and start blasting, right? I think that I might have done a little bit too much grinding, though, because, like, I think we might be a little bit OP for this. But, I mean, that can be fun, right? Ready for orders. That could be fun. I say we go out here and give this guy a little taste of the old king crab. Right? I mean, that's what we do, right? Act quickly. Alpha Lance, fall in on my position. I've got eyes on the enemy. We do a precision strike right here. Let's see how you like this. Oh, we we missed with one of them, sadly. I hear ya. And glitch is way back here, so we got to get her in. Um. Receiving you. So Decker. We have an SRM carrier back there. That is by far the most dangerous thing they have. Um, but SRM carrier also not very heavily armored. So what we might want to do is get in here and do like a split shot type thing uh, on the on on the SRM carrier and the blackjack, and that might wipe him out. Um, yeah, the, the Gauss rifle hitting anywhere on the SRM carrier should kill it. And then we give this guy 
uh, everything else. And that should wipe that guy out. Engaging multiple targets. Yeah, Gauss rifle for the win. I really thought that was going to kill him. Yes, Commander. <sighs> okay, so the question is... Do we want to light something else up? Because the Blackjack is unfortunately still at full fighting capacity. And Decker can't split his fire. I'm not really worried about that so much. Um, we could really screw up the Commando's day. Nah, it's probably best to just take one of them out. Let's take one of them out. Here we go. Eat that. It just keeps coming. I can't believe we didn't... <laughs> I cannot believe that we didn't... Um, that we didn't do enough damage to the center torso to blow that up. That guy's gonna go before me. Uh, well, no, Decker might go before him. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. We will have to see. We need to get our Atlas in there. Ready for orders. I, I gotta be honest, I really thought that um, Behemoth was gonna wipe that guy out one shot. Uh, what's our... Our shots on the Griffin are actually pretty poor. Uh, we can take these. Uh, he's at one, so let's just shoot uh, the LRM-10s at the center tour so it would be done with this guy. Save a few missiles. No, no point in firing 65 when like one missile Get will go. do. Uh, not great shots from here. Uh, but you know we got to take them. You betcha. Okay, we got four rounds to to destroy these guys. Okay, we hit with the AC-20. Nice. Okay, he's unsteady. So... I'm, um... Oh, let's move in a little bit closer so we can uh, get a better strike on this guy. Part of me wants to split something off so we can fire at the commando too. The other part of me just wants to... Uh, I guess let's do that. Let's do a... Let's do a split here. The only reason I want to split that off is to take one of the evasion from the commando down. Well... No, there's no reason to do that because... Because we are... If we knock this guy down and we don't blow him up, we're not going to be firing at the commando, so there's not really any reason to do that. Um, I'm going to just go for his center torso, and if it doesn't blow him up, which it, I mean, it probably won't. It's 190. It might. Um, these are pretty good shots. If it does blow him up, then we'll go after the commando. Okay, it did blow him up. Those are really, really good shots. Enemy destroyed. I mean, that thing that thing does kind of erase those smaller mechs. I don't know if I want to take these shots at the commando because, like, look. Yeah, I kind of do. They're really bad shots, though. But, I, like, as I was saying, I've got really, really low ammo with this mech. Roger that. So, if it doesn't hit, it really doesn't do a whole lot.
Yeah, I mean, a large laser is nothing to is nothing to sneeze at. What's up, boss? Okay, let's see how this guy reacts to this. All weapons are go. I don't think he's gonna like it. Yeah. Nice. Be done, Commander. The storage silo is ours. I'm marking an evac zone on your map. Whenever you're ready, you may proceed there for extraction. Okay, let me have a look at the other, um... The other places. Okay. We've got that one there, and then... Is the other one, like, way... I mean, I can't even keep this straight. They are all over the place. Wait, wait, hold on a second. So can you go... I, w I really wish there was like a, a tactical map or something. Um, hold on. Can you... Is there a way from each one of these to another to the other one? I mean, it looks like I guess that one's not that far, but it does look I mean, I don't know if there's terrain. Yeah, I mean, we can't get over that. I do think we have to go back. So I copy. Aye aye. Don't need to tell me twice. If... Yeah, if I remember... If I remember and nothing interesting happens in between these areas, what I'll try to do is just cut to... Cut it out so we're, we're at On my way. Um, the actual uh, places. On it. So we don't have to um, see all the walking. Cause that's gonna be a lot of walking. Okay, so here we are at the second storage silo, and we're gonna try to take this one out. It took forever to get here, so hopefully I remember to cut that one out. <laughs> or cut that stuff out, cause that was a lot of just nothing. Um... Uh, let's go ahead and reserve him, and then I'm going to move these guys up and go to town on these dudes. So, I mean, uh, the king... Uh, there's, there's this guy over here. I think I'm going to jump Blave up to where he can do another split shot. Take out this vehicle. LRM carrier. Oh, yeah, we don't like that. Lock and load, we don't like that. We got Definitely gonna be almost certainly the most dangerous thing here. So let's have a look at it again. Now we're seeing 45 armor there. Yep. Okay, so the Gauss rifle is gonna take it out one hit. So we're gonna do a split shot there and there, and then everything else goes to B. Engaging multiple targets. Boom! I love that thing. Good to go. Now, now this king crab is really going to start coming into its own we when we're having to use it as a tank. I mean, like I said, oh, it, oh, it does have AC twenty pluses. I thought it was just stock AC twenties. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good. This is a decent amount of firepower, but I mean, it's not, it's not, um, you know, anything really to write home about. Firing. Oh, that guy lost a leg. Sorry, buddy. Inflicted some heavy damage. Now, the Lich is way back here, so we gotta sprint her in. Yeah. On on this mission, it, the, her slowness is really um, coming in, uh, coming to the forefront, on account of 
you know, we're, we're getting in here and we're finishing these guys off so quickly that it's not, you know, becoming the slug fest that it often is, you know, when you are fighting against other assault mechs and things like that. You know, we're fighting against, like, really, really light dudes here. Um, I wonder if I should just... Let's see, that guy's six... He's got 180 total there. And he's got, like, 200 there. We're, we got much better shots at the center torso. I'm just going to go after his center torso. Hello. Man, he really doesn't like that. It's so many missiles. <laughs> oh, here comes the 20-tonner. <laughs> he's, he's digging in. Oh, the trebuchet. Now that actually is... That actually... Well, he we fired one laser at us. <laughs> I mean, trebuchets are usually packing some heat, but for some reason he elected to just fire one at us. Um, so the question is, the Centurion's going to be able to get up. How much more, more firepower does he have? Not a ton. Um, I mean, well, I mean, he's got most of his firepower left, honestly, but uh, he doesn't have a lot of armor left. I'm going to go after, I'm going to go after him and uh, wipe him out here. Let my other mechs deal with these other guys. No point in letting the Centurion fire at us if we don't have to. Okay. We'll let Behemoth fire uh, last here. Uh, let's let, can, can Glitch get up here and do some damage? Yeah, I'm going to get Glitch going after the uh, Locust. Uh -huh. Just because I like some Atlas V Locust action. Um, no, if, if she hits this, if she actually hits this thing, then it's going to be really, really struggling. Yeah, it doesn't like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I concur wholeheartedly. Let's see if Blave can do, um, do his magic on this other guy. And the thing is, he is... Well, he fired, so I don't actually know how he is... How he's defended. It must be... He must have had... Ha, he must have vigilance or something. Because he fired. So I gotta be honest, I'm not exactly sure... Uh, how he's doing what he's doing. Uh, he, I guess he's just got 20% damage reduction. Um... I'm still going to go for a precision strike on the center torso, and let's just see how much damage we can inflict. Mm, not quite enough. Behemoth. I mean, the Locust is just not... I don't think the Locust is worth our time. Coordinates received. Let's see. We can do one AC-20 shot. Called shot for the center torso. We missed, but... Well, I mean, maybe we got him. It was a delayed reaction explosion. I thought it would have instantly blown up. Okay, this, let's see how long this little guy can last. Yeah, so I think that we've leveled up a little bit past maybe where we are uh, where we are supposed to be. I'm not exactly sure when or if the uh, story missions are going to catch up to us. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like old school RPGs. Um, you know, if you grind, <laughs> well, I mean, and newer ones, I guess, if you grind up for long enough. Um, we just wreck everything. Target neutralized. But uh, I mean, it, and you, know, you go up to the final boss and one shot him or something. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think just like the last one, we're gonna have to circle on back and then go 
this way. Yep. Once again, I'll try to remember to cut that, cut this traversal out because it is pretty dang lame. Okay, so here we are at the last silo. And I only see two of them on scope right now, but we can assume like the, the last one had uh, an LRM carrier and the first one had an SRM carrier. So we can assume that there is uh, a scary vehicle here. That being said, uh, we've, I think we've only been shot like once so far. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe that's not true. Let's see. Yeah. The Highlander has taken a very minor amount of damage. So honestly, I don't really care how scary it is. Uh, I don't think there's really anything it could possibly do to us to actually um, damage us. I mean, we are completely steamrolling this. Um, Waiting for orders. I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna sprint her in here. I literally don't even care. I don't even care about that cover. I don't even care about the cover. We're just moving in. Yeah, there's a vehicle back there. We're just running in. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Okay, we've got a cicada. We've got a shadow hog. That's actually uh, respectable. Okay. Let's... Okay, we can't really precision strike the front of the shadow hog, so let's just fire at it the old-fashioned way. Roger that. Yeah, it's just it's just too much for it to handle. Okay, we can get in there and fire everything at it, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, let's go after that leg. Boom! Man, he does not like that at all. It's just, it's just too much, too much firepower. And I mean, not only do we have massive firepower, but you gotta realize we've got like really massive tankiness on our side too. Uh, I mean, this would, this picture would look a, a good bit different if we were fighting against assaults. We have sacrificed some firepower uh, in order to, um, in order to uh, last longer against really, really, um, really, really heavy, heavily armed opponents, but <laughs> yep. that is not what these guys are. <laughs> that is simply not what we're dealing with right now. Uh, a Jenner. No, we're just going to go after this guy and wipe him out. And this is going to do the trick. This is definitely going to do the trick. Tough break guy. I love that. I love that so much. We could potentially swap out that LRM, the other LRM-10 for another LRM-15, get a couple more missiles on there. Um, you know, at the cost of just a little bit more armor. Uh, don't know if it's, strictly speaking, necessary. Yeah, let's go over here and attack this Jenner. Still don't know what they're holding back there in reserve. Here it comes. Eat that. Scored a critical hit. Oh, got a got a one sh one attack knockdown on the Jenner. That's nice. Um, the fact that this guy is running away is a little bit concerning to me. I'm gonna see if I can go after him. I I don't like that. Because we have to kill these guys in a, in a really short amount of time. Oh man, I really don't like that. Um, I'm gonna try to leg him. Uh, odds of me hitting are pretty low, but oh, we got it. It was it was all up to that Gauss rifle hitting. If we missed with the Gauss rifle, we wouldn't have done enough damage, but we, we got with it, so... 
Nice. He's not going anywhere. Good to go. Okay, and then get this atlas in here and just wipe this dude off the face of the way. earth. Um. Yeah, take his leg out. Yeah, that guy's wrecked. Did you see that? Did you see it? That guy's wrecked. Well, this guy's not getting away anymore. I don't think. Well, he's still trying to. Oh no. Okay, he's backing up. I thought he was running away. It would be wise for you to run away, dude. Um, one of our... Okay, we've got three rounds to get back there and wipe that dude out. we got three rounds. It's going to be okay, everybody. we still got 535 missiles. Copy that. Eat that! Man, he took that pretty well. Solid connection on that one. He took that pretty well, but I do love the missiles. Um. Man, we are heating up, aren't we? Waiting for orders. Orders. Okay, we are. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to sprint through here. Something tells me that guy's got a lot of firepower. Something also tells me I'm in a king crab that hasn't been hit yet. Well, no, has been hit a little bit, but I'm not worried about that. it. In the least. Um, I won't move into the blow-up zone just because. Might not have enough to fire everything here. Let's do a called shot, a center torso, take this guy out. Man, he's a good pilot. Enemy destroyed. He has become a quite good. Another SRM carrier, so that's... That's some scary stuff right there. Ooh, overheating. Uh... I don't want to overheat. 40 missiles should do the trick. Let's do a precision strike to ensure it. We're getting so, I mean, oh, that was another thing to mention. I forgot. We have maxed out our uh, morale. We're in the highest tier of morale now, so that also, as you can see, really helping us out. Nice. Good work, Commander. Thanks to you, the Directorate has suffered a major setback, and we've gained a valuable new asset. Yeah, three cheers! If you'll excuse me, Lady Yorano, we need to get these mechs hosed down and decontaminated. Come on, Commander. Yang's got a great big tub of boron, and he's just dying to use it. <laughs> Commander, and the area has been cleared. Darius has given me the green light to land immediately. Hold position. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm done walking all over this frickin' nasty rocky okay so I d I thought we were like supposed to be rescuing um some some uh, lady who was being held up in a in a in her own castle or something like that I thought that was why we were coming out here but no we were just uh, uh preventing these people from sabotaging their silos so they could get um, these resources. Now, I, I understand that capturing resources is a big part of um, uh, war efforts, especially when you're the underdog. That makes a lot of sense. But I, based on the last, um, the last uh, part of the story mission, uh, that just... I don't... I, that, that part doesn't quite make sense to me. But we did get these contract... Uh, uh, payment increases, which is really nice. Got a decent payday, which is going to put us back up in uh, an area where I'm a little bit more comfortable. That being said, we've been reduced from, you know, well over 3 million to uh, under a million uh, really quickly before. Uh, I mean, we didn't hardly take a single scratch in that one, and there is, um, uh, it, it was pretty obvious why. Um, and I mean, look at that. The, the, that indirect fire support is just 
it's <laughs> it's so good. I mean, look at all those kills he racked up. Um, the King Crab and the Atlas. Um, I mean, the way that we have them outfit, yeah, we have sacrificed a little bit of firepower um, for armor. And in that one, their armor didn't count for squat. Armor was useless in that one. We could have put 100 armor on each one of these mechs and their structure wouldn't have been touched at all in that in that particular mission. You know, we didn't need any armor at all in that mission. We could have we could have put as much firepower as would have fit on these mechs and we would have been better served in that one. So that that's not a really good representation of how we've outfit these. Uh, cuz clearly with the stalker we have uh, preferred firepower uh, with the king crab and the atlas we've mostly preferred um, armor with the highlander it's just supremely balanced i don't know what else to say about it it seems like it's got an obscene amount of firepower and a very very generous amount of armor i don't know what to say about that except for i love it like even if we got another atlas I don't think I would put it in here. I think I would keep the Highlander. Um, so, yeah. It's just it's just an amazing mech. Okay, so I think that I will take the Trebuchet, and this is why. Um, because I can sell this thing on the black market. Um, and then I, maybe I'll take... If we can, anything else that we can make... Because that's another good way to make money. Unless there's stuff here. Ooh. Actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. LRM20++. That would be really nice to put on our... Uh, stalker. Do they have any, like, really great equipment? Yeah, we want that LRM20++. Please. Uh, the LRM15++ would also be pretty good. Wouldn't it? I mean, we could put that on our stalker as well. I mean, it's an extra 50% damage. Right? Um, I mean, you're going from... What is it? 4 times 15, which is 60, to 90 damage. Uh, potential output for that weapon, which is that's big. I mean, that's not that is not a negligible change. That's that's actually fairly significant. So, yeah, I'm going to grab the LRM 15 at the LRM 20 and I'm going to grab uh, the trebuchet so we can sell that thing. I think that's actually really, really good loot for us there. Is that trebuchet? I think we'll sell for somewhere around 500,000. So, that's actually going to be pretty good for us. Let's see if we got anything else that's in, at all useful. Uh, the SRM-6 uh, plus um, possibly useful, uh, but I don't think we're going to need it. Yeah, I don't actually think we're going to need that. Let's see if we get a cutscene. And that was a story mission. That was one of the more innocuous story missions. Like, we didn't get a cutscene or any kind of talk leading into it. We just arrived there, and it and it started up like any other contract. Um, so as far as, like, the contract campaign missions, that one was fairly, uh, fairly innocuous. Revelations. Okay. So it does look like we've freed her, or at least we can contact her now. Lady Arano, after almost two years of directorate imprisonment... I'd nearly lost hope for myself, for Itram, for the entire Oregon Reach. Okay, so apparently what we did actually uh, actually freed Itram, or at least freed her. So that's that's uh, that's impressive. Um, the those silos must have been very critically important. I owe you my eternal gratitude, all of you. Because of your actions, the Directorate's hold on Itram has been broken and my people have been saved. I've been fighting for the Eregan Coalition for most of my adult life, Lady Gala. Saving your people comes with the territory. That's what we're here for. For now, you probably shouldn't get too comfortable yet. Save your thanks. We're here because we need your help. Okay, that's what we're here for, Lady Gallus, is what I'm going with. Yes, it is. But their continued survival is anything but certain. 
Yeah, I mean, look what happened at Smithen with uh, Lord Carosus and and all those people. My goodness. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if we can protect you, so you're going to have to start setting up some serious defenses. I'm going to be honest with you, Lady Gallus. I had to wade through a sea of blood to reach Itram. My army is war-weary and outgunned, and the Reach is on the verge of being overrun. So if you know anything that can help us, I need you to share it with me. Yes, Lady Urano, I can help you. I know where you can find what you'll need to break the Directorate's alliance with the Torian Concordat. You need to travel to Goldra. Lord Madeira's home system? Uh-huh. And what are we supposed to find there? You promised us evidence, not another lead to follow. Um. Okay, yeah, what are we... I mean, is... Okay, yeah, I guess let's find out more about it being Lord Madeira's home system, because maybe he'll chime in and, and say something about that. Um, and obviously we're going to get to the what are we supposed to find there point. That's right. If you search the Madeira archives, you'll find what you need. Over the past year, three years, House Madeira has collected a treasure trove of incriminating evidence on House Espinosa. An insurance policy, so to speak. Find it and deliver it to Protector Calderon, and our Torian problems will be over. The archives are DNA locked to my family. If we're going to gain access to this insurance policy, I'll need to travel there myself. Well, it's a good thing that you have survived this long and that you're traveling with us then. And hopefully not at the head of an army. You've seen what war has done to Itram. I pray that Goldra can be spared the same fate. Alexander, I... A thunderous roar cuts Lady Gallus' sentences, sentence short, and the image on your view screen cuts to nothing. Lady Gallus? Samantha, can you hear me? Holy shit, Lady Urano. Sensors are picking up evidence of a massive fuel-air explosion in the capital. Castle Gallus is gone. The bastards must have planted a bomb before we drove them away. Oh, man. Yet another mass murder that to hold House Espinosa accountable for, yeah. It's tragic, but at least we learned what we need to know. Yes, that's true, but that's super insensitive to say right now. I'm going to go with the bastards must have planted a bomb before we drove them away. Damn it. Damn it to hell. Alexander, get emergency services to the capital. Medical teams, combat engineers, whoever you can find. We need to search the wreckage for survivors. I'll dispatch our forces right away, Kamea. But then I must return home. I will travel with an appropriate bodyguard, but otherwise I need to go alone. Lady Gallus was right. We've lost too much already. I won't see an army move on Goldra, not if I can do the job myself. Alexander, no, I won't allow it. I can't afford to lose you. Kamea, please. I am duty-bound to see this through. Goldra is a core system, a veritable fortress. If we, attempt, if we attempt an invasion, there will be terrible losses on both sides. I won't allow that, not if I can achieve our goal another way. And I am confident that I can accomplish, through subterfuge, what our army could not. The recovery of the evidence we need, without unnecessary bloodshed. Man, that's ballsy, man. Stupid, but ballsy. <laughs> no, that's actually a good idea. That's actually a good idea. And that's commendable. That's commendable. I wouldn't want to go in there without some serious firepower and support. I am your loyal servant and friend, Kamea. I always have been. But I am also a Madeira. And I have a responsibility to protect Goldra from harm. You of all people should understand that. Um... You need to let him do this. If I had the option of going back home and setting things right, I'd jump at the chance. Uh, this is his family we're talking about. He should be the one to deal with them. Hate to break it to you, but right now the Argo isn't all that safe either. Um, I gotta be honest, I actually don't really love any of these options. So I'm gonna go with the first one. I'm gonna go with the first one. Yes, Blave. I know that you would, as I would. I, I know that you would, as would I. I suppose that's what this war is all about. Very well, my old friend. 
You may go if you must. Now you know how I feel every time you insist on leading a combat mission. Or now you know how I feel. Yeah. Not a good feeling, is it? Go. Get us the leverage we need. We'll hold the line against the Torians for as long as we can. I know you will. We can win this, Kamea. We will win this. You're damned right we will. We'll make sure of it. I don't even need to read the other options. That's what we're going with. You heard the commander. Back to your stations, everyone. We've got a war to win. That mech is ready to fight, commander. Okay. So that's just telling us about the trebuchet. And it's really... Oh, okay. I, I thought we had already done that. So it's telling us we get some experience. All right. So we're good to go there. So... Um, I don't think we have an, uh, a contract available from her, so we will have to uh, fight stuff. At this particular moment, I'm honestly, I'm really not concerned with, I mean, we could take uh, pretty much any skull. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I don't want to say that I don't think the game could throw anything at us. That wouldn't be a challenge. I think that five, like, I mean... I think that four and five school missions could be challenging. I'm not saying that, that we would just steamroll absolutely anything that came into our path. But I do think now that we have the mechs to take on the most challenging missions. That's what I'm saying. Um, so let's have a look at the store here and see if they actually have um, some really cool stuff. Oh, there is a black market here, so we can go ahead and sell that. Um, uh, we... Oh, let me, I gotta actually, I've got to put it, you can only sell mechs that are in storage. And we're definitely not going to, um, just to, just to point this out, I can set, I can scrap it for 368. We don't want to do that. We want to send it to storage. And then we go to the store, black market, selling mechs. 471, so you get another 100,000, basically. 368 to 471. So that's pretty nice. Um, let's see. Buy weapons. Um, they've got a Gauss rifle here as well. That's really nice. Uh, can't afford it. SRM 6 plus plus plus. Could buy that to stick on the uh, King Crab, it doesn't have uh, something that fancy. Um, okay, let's actually look in the system. The system might have some good weapons. Okay, the system has garbage. <laughs> the system has absolute garbage in terms of systems. Um, I mean, no, in terms of uh, weapons doesn't have anything that we really super duper want there either i may look into putting like maybe one more ton of ammo um into the whoops into the no we're done we're, i didn't need to talk to you yang uh, i may look into putting one more ton of ammo into the King Crab, the, having just 10 shots, which is just really five if you're firing both of them, is really not a whole lot. Um, also, I think... Uh, no, we have all those um, doubles. Yeah, we have the doubles in here because we were managing all that heat. It still wasn't doing that great, but that being said, we were on that Martian place, which was, which was uh, uh, hitting us with the heat pretty hard. Uh, so we could get that SRM6++, which would help out a little bit with the damage here. I am looking for, um, you know, some AC20s, kind of like those other ones that did uh, the extra stability damage and the 20 extra damage. That would be really nice um, to get some more in there. And maybe I might be willing to sacrifice a ton of armor for some more ammo on this guy. Maybe. Maybe. That being said, when we get into the big slug fests, she might not be firing constantly, and we might just be, you know, letting all of this armor soak up some damage, which is, you know, what we made Behemoth for, and what that mech would be really, really good at doing. But, anyway, 
that's a lot of stuff to be uh, pretty excited about. I think uh, we are we're we're really powerful. I think for possibly a while, if that mission is anything to go on, the mercenary contracts are going to be um, the more interesting ones. So I'll at least I'll at least record the next mercenary contract we do if we can find one that's maybe four and a half skulls. Maybe this one. You know, if we can find a four and a half or a five skull mission, uh, I'll record it. Uh, probably no, like, three and a half or four skull missions. Um, I don't think that those will be interesting, because those will probably be mostly heavy mechs and uh, things like that. So I think that we'll probably steamroll those and, um, and probably won't really be, um, you know, worth well worth putting up um so you know i'll, I'll probably do I, m I might do one or two of these missions but i don't know if i'm really inclined to unless i want to get that get that six million and get the, and buy that nice gals rifle which i may want to do i don't know i could another option Another option is I've got the awesome and the battle master, which frankly I don't plan on using anymore. Like I just have them. I could sell these and that would give me almost enough money for that Gauss rifle, which I would be able to put in the Highlander and then possibly put the other Gauss rifle in in place of the AC-20. You know, that's that's actually something to think about. Because then we would have another Gauss rifle, and the Gauss rifle by itself is ridiculously good. So anyway, that's something that's something that I'm going to think about. That being said, we're not going to... Um, we're, we're not going to record uh, mercenary missions that are just uh, four skulls or less. I'm going to try to find us a uh, four and a half skull mission, possibly this one um, to do, uh, possibly another one, um, but I will, I will be figuring that out. But we kind of have a plan. We're not, the only thing we're really um, looking at is uh, trying to find better weapons in the meantime, better weapons, better equipment. Wouldn't mind getting some more of those double heat sinks. That would really help us out too. Uh, that would, that would help us out. Um, and then if, if for some reason we found a, a mech that replaced our, if for some reason we found a mech that replaced our stalker, that would be good. Um, we do have a lot of skill points actually here to level up. So there is some more stuff going on. And then, um, you know, in engineering. So there, I mean, there's still a lot of stuff going on in this game. I, 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 I have kind of a feeling that we're near the end of the game too. Um, that we're nearing the end of the game, but I, I can't, I honestly can't remember. Um, so who knows how many more, uh, how many more campaign missions that we've got, but we're going to keep plugging at it until we get it done. But, uh, I think that we're probably getting close to as powerful as we're going to be other than, you know, getting better and better weapons. Uh, and then our pilots are about as good as they're going to be too. So, um, so yeah, but, um, that's partly attributable. I'm going to stop yammering here really quick, I swear. That's partly attributable attributable to the fact that in the mission where we got our Highlander, we got we got the final pieces of two other mechs, and I had also been really prioritizing just buying every piece of an assault mech that we could possibly find, that we could possibly even barely afford, and that really, really paid dividends there. Once we got those, once we got those assault mechs, we were able to start taking on harder missions. And once you can take on those harder missions, then you can really start making your squad harder because you're, you're getting more pieces of those heavier mechs. So, I mean, it just kind of, uh, you know, I keep talking about the snowball effect, but it just, I mean, it really snowballs. Like once you get those bigger mechs, it just kind of carries away with itself and you start getting more and more of them. You know, but I mean, when you're dealing with like the the medium mechs and even the heavy mechs, it's really hard to capture your first 
um, assault mech. You know, it's like a big deal. But then, you know, after you've got one and then two, you know, it starts to it starts to just come to you. So we're doing good. We're doing good. We've got a plan and we've we finally got some armor and some firepower. So things are going our way. So anyway, as always, thanks so much for watching. And we are going to pick up somewhere in the future, possibly right here if we find uh, the right contract. But we're going to pick up in one of those places next time. <laughs>